All right, viewers and listeners, hello. Another movie review from 1178. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to the new subscribers. That's going quite well. So tonight, we're going to be talking about a movie that Samir picked. And speaking of Samir... Hey! Hello. Hi, guys. Good evening. You all right? Yeah, good, thanks. And we also have with us third member of the crew, Justin. Hi. Good evening, gentlemen. How are one this no. evening? Tell you. Tell you. Yes. Bogey at yes. six o'clock, I understand. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, by that stupid affected accent, it means that we are reviewing an English classic, Battle of Britain, 1969 movie. Guess who picked it? Fucking Samir, innit? Living in the past. Yep, just can't get uh, it. Oh, a era that you yeah. didn't even know. Uh, you don't even have a bloody clue. Hmm. Yeah, it's my favourite era, though. I don't know why. It went alive, but I'm not sure how. But 60s. Historically, perhaps, maybe. Yeah, his, yeah. historically, I was on the van, mate. I was too busy well, travelling the space. Well, i tell you what, right? Um, I'm actually starting to pine for eras that I actually wasn't part of. I started like watching old clips of 1950s London and stuff, and you think, God, I wish... Don't say it. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> how can you pine for an era you was never part of? But everything looks so much more simpler then, and so much more laid I, back. I do agree with you. I mean, a bit like that with the eighties here, but it's more the the fifties to the seventies in the in the US. I think. Well, I think you were around in the eighties, but you were a little bit too young to remember them. But well, Parts yeah, of it, anyway. I, yeah. I mean, it was you know one to ten in the eighties, but. Which is a simpler time because it wasn't corrupted by fucking social media. Well, yep. that's true, yeah. Um, but in general, corruption wise, I think there was like there was shitloads of it. They could get away with more of it. You just didn't hear them know about it because there wasn't well, social media. <laughs> actually, it's probably a good place to start with this film, actually, because of course you know propaganda played quite heavy in Second World War. But I'm, we probably will get to that. Yes, that's okay. So 1969, Battle of Britain. Samir's pick. Uh, I will admit, I've never seen this film before. Well, no well, way. Hold yeah. the bus. Does no. that mean I get my passport revoked? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Have you never seen like Six Three Three Squadron or the Dam Busters either? Uh, no, I don't think I have. I watched the Sixty Three uh, Squadron uh, this afternoon. Funny enough. Six Three Three. Yeah. Yeah. The bridge too far. Seen that. Crikey. I see, well, you know what? I see, um, well, in, in my defence, I seem to remember these films being on the TV when I was younger, but yeah, it was kind of a period where it was like TV of the 80s and you had the 80s movies, which were much more interesting and much you know more effects and stuff and more mainstream actors and whatnot. So it was just a... a oh, these were these films, mainstream actors. What are these, you talking yeah, about? Yeah, back in the 60s and the 70s. Yeah, I didn't not, have a fucking yeah. clue. I know were. exactly what Paul means, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just wasn't current zeitgeist, was it? You know, when I was growing up, it was all about Dan Aykroyd, Bill Murray, and Ghostbusters yeah. and shit. Something it strange about Lawrence Olivier. I didn't yeah. even fucking know how to pronounce his last name. So L- 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 Olivier, Lawrence, Lawrence Olivier, darling, Lawrence Olivier. Yes, yes, yes. Olivier, because everyone yeah. so, looked like that back in that era. Right? These films yes, were on in the background as a kid, course. and it was just boring. You know, it was just kind of like, oh, right, okay, boring. Oh, my granddad was part of that. Oh, I find it boring. Yeah. yeah, my granddad wasn't then. No, no, I'm just giving an example. <laughs> no, he, he had it way on his toes. He never went. He went AWOL. <laughs> All right. No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. No. Still, he was too young. Looking for him. <laughs> he, he, he did his. He did his. Um, he, he, he's, uh, what do they call it? National service. He got called up. Spent most of his time out in Kenya and also locked up in a glass house. Kept nice. on eating people. Oh, dear. Oh, a, actually, glass there's a lot of that now these days. The social media people are locked up in glass houses, isn't they? <laughs> <laughs> bloody, I don't know what social media. Yeah. <laughs> now, let's talk about this bloody film and shit. Yeah, right? it's coming. Let's talk about it. Go on, right. Should I, uh, See, I this is the synopsis. synopsis. Yeah, Before yeah, we but... start, like it's like Justin, that's the way uh, guys speak these days. A little bit roadie. Roadie, you know what I mean? Like a geezer. No one talks like that anymore. That's gone. It's all roadman speak, isn't it? 
Oh yeah, yeah, I've got that. Yeah, don't start. That. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Going... <laughs> right about the Britons, the only reason we're here. So, yep. in 1940, the British Royal Air Force fights a desperate battle to prevent the Luftwaffe from gaining air superiority over the English Channel as a prelude to a possible Axis invasion of the UK. That had one comma in it, so oh, I have to get my breath back. Right. Um, let's do the cast. Let me just present my screen. Share my tab, my IMDb tab. Right. Okay. So Michael Caine was. Did he? What? Well, why is he even mentioned? He was in this film for about five minutes. Then he got shot down. Um, right. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I think he disappeared. So, actually. Well, no. Didn't... Yeah. He, I thought he disappeared. I didn't think he got yeah. shot down. Yeah. No, he he got, got, got shot down. They, they, the guy came back to me and said the CEO's gone as well. They just pounced on us. They just came out of nowhere. Right. Okay. And that explains it because um, earlier today I put in our YouTube community section uh, an, I an image of Michael Caine saying, where did Michael Caine disappear to? Answers on a postcard, please. Because I didn't realise he got shut down. Shows how much attention I was paying, doesn't it? <clears throat> um, Trevor Howard, Air Vice Marshal Keith Park. A I legend do. Yeah. That's, right, I know where you're going with this. And... Um, no. I believe that a lot of these names are real people of the time. Yes, that's right, yeah. So, Harry Andrews, senior civil servant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a real person, a senior civil servant. Um, Kurt Jürgens uh, plays Baron von Richter. That's Kurt Jürgens. Um, Great actor Kurt he is, Jürgens. wasn't he? He was a he, Bond guy, he, Bond villain. He, he was, yeah. yeah. I can't remember which one, though. Uh, in Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah, he owned that big sort of like thing that came Underwa out of water. Yeah. Underwater City or whatever it was. Yeah, That's right, yeah. What one was that? That was For Your Eyes Only. Yeah. Spy Who Loved Me. Spy, Spy Who Loved Me. That, was that a Roger Moore one? Yeah, it sure was Roger Moore. Oh, so yeah, it was Roger probably Moore. Why probably why I didn't give a shit then. Yeah. Ian McShane, but Sergeant Pilot Andy. Yep. Did uh, Ian McShane look really young? Yes, he did. Yeah. yeah, I've only ever seen him in like middle aged. So to see him so young was like, wow, he actually did look young once in his life. Yes. Uh, Lawrence Olivier, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh. That's cr that's been truncated. That text. Downing. It was Downing. There it is. Lawrence Olivier, Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Downing. Yeah, Dowding. Not Downing, Dowding. Dowding, okay. Uh, Christopher Plummer, squadron leader Colin Harvey, is probably worth a mention. Robert Shaw, worth a mention. Squadron yes. leader Skipper. Uh, Ralph Richardson. Um, the British minister, it was actually ambassador, but they made him minister there, but okay. Um, I can't Susan think of anyone else's. Susan else's York. Really Susan York. Right. She was an Susanna, yeah, Susanna York, section officer Susanna. Maggie Harvey. Yeah. Right. Okay. <clears throat> well, I, I just wanted to mention something. Uh, there's a few people that weren't mentioned. There were actually <clears throat> British film royalty and legends at the time, like Trevor Howard, uh, Olivier, and a few others. So, I just wanted to say that that, that was a a, a star a list. Um, cast for the time. You know what? My overriding thoughts on all of this was that um, this film, there wasn't really any characters in this film. No, no, I didn't. It's, about... it's, it's, no, it's about just a the, mash of, yeah. Yeah, it's about the historical. It might as well have been a documentary. They might as well have done it. You know, like the modern style documentaries, almost done like TV shows and films now. Yes. Where they have actors playing the parts. It, it's pretty, pretty much one of those, really, because I didn't feel any connection to any of the characters in this film. I didn't feel like I knew any of them. Mm -hmm. In fact, it was mostly just complete confusion. I mean, what was the married couple thing all about? So, yeah. Well, other than being really bullish. And uh, sort of uh, hating each other because they didn't work next to each other. That's it, really. There wasn't really much in there. It was just a story that was meant to be in the background somewhere, something's happening in their personal life because of the war. 
that's it, really. Yeah, you, you might as well just not bothered. Just don't no. just not bother. I mean, it, it offered nothing, really. No. 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 I, I think we forgot something in the past. We haven't said who are the German exes, uh, if we want to go through those. Well, if you know them off the top of your head, because they weren't listed. Weren't they? Oh, okay. No. Well, there's okay. one, Kurt Jürgens, um, but the guy who played um, Herman Goring, he wasn't, none of them listed. So, all I know about that guy, uh, he was a country singer, German country singer, and a TV uh, star in Germany in the 60s and 70s, and he died of a heart failure or attack or something like that. That's all I know about him. I don't know his name. Unfortunately, I forgot his name. His real name. Well, that's fucking helpful, isn't it? Brilliant. Right. Okay. So that's the German cast covered then. Right. <laughs> well, be honest. Would you would you remember any German names or? Ger- uh, I mean, well, I might know. have done. But then, if they were listed on the IMDb page, I would have read them out. Okay. So obviously, IMDb don't care. No. Did the lose inside? Who cares about them? Yes. Okay. Well, does um, they don't actually have any any points because there seem to be um. Well, we're still on the numbers. well, we're still on the cast. No. Oh, it's done. What what I found interesting <clears throat> is how they they actually used real aircrafts, and it was the Spanish Air Force that helped them, uh, with quite a lot of the cra- uh, aircrafts. Um, for example, the um the a German fighter uh, planes. Um, the only difference was the engine was slightly different. They used Spanish uh, engines, so the belly was a little bit pudu. I can't even say it. Coming out underneath at the bottom uh, because of the way the engine was actually fitted into uh, the actual uh, fight. Talk about talk about the one hundred and nines. The German fighter. Yeah, fire yeah, 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 yeah. The one hundred and nines. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And also they had uh, 30 of the um, actual bombers as well, going out of service or something. Uh, and well, they, there, there, so... there was a lot of repetitive scenes. I mean, th- there was a huge, there... <laughs> there's a huge amount of repetitive scenes uh, yes. in, with the planes. Because, of course, at the beginning, they're not even Spitfires, they're Hurricanes. Because really, <laughs> many will argue that it was the Hurricanes that won the Battle of Britain, not the Spitfire. But I'm just saying what the history I found out where they got oh, the yeah. bloody planes yeah. from, mate. I'm not saying that yeah. they had thousand planes are flying over London, am I? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, I'm, uh, I um, uh, let me find, let me find, let me find it. I actually made um, a post about this, about the hurricane and all that stuff mm. earlier. And um, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of like, but if you're in a room with people who really like understand it, but like, wasn't the Spitfires the one about the Britain? It was the Hurricanes. Yeah. Yeah. Because they were they were weren't as fast, yeah, but they were much more robust. Can you see this post? Yeah. So made just three Not hours ago. The, I made the, a, the, the... I made a poll. So we've had eight votes, and I said, "What was best, Spitfire or Hawk Hurricane?" In our community section, eighty-eight percent of people voted for Spitfire because that's what we're brought up to be told to believe. Indeed. <clears throat> yes. Yep. And someone also made a comment there. Oh, it's some guy called Sammy Coca Ketcher. <laughs> <laughs> the Spitfire was the support plane for the hurricane. Uh, I did not know until a few years ago, but the Spitfire became more famous. Yeah, I think it just had better marketing, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Better uh, marketing, yeah, really. Yeah, better marketing. So, but but the, difference, the only difference between the two of them, if I remember rightly, was they were both Merlin V12s, but the Spitfire was supercharged, whereas the Hurricane wasn't. <clears throat> Hence, why the, the Spitfire was slightly faster, and also, which is why it could it could uh, incline quicker and dive faster because it had the supercharger attached think, to it. I think okay. you're right. Uh, the other thing was that they couldn't uh, produce the Spitfires as fast as a Hurricane or something called dead. It was a similar construction. Yeah. yeah, and the reason the Hurricane was produced more is because it was also put in a two seater version for training. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Facts but, but, coming at you. Well, I, mean, I just, wow. something I remember from being told a long, 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 long time ago, yeah. which is why but I think he, in this film, the, the hurricanes feature more heavily at the beginning as a little sort yeah. of maybe, you know, swan song to it. But. Yeah, so, the, so the hurricanes were actually portrayed in this film, right? Yeah. 
Yes. They Quite will. a lot, actually. Uh, yeah. Controllers, you'll be joining an organization which oh, oh yeah. Sorry. No, that's all right. <laughs> I was just uh, this. <laughs> if you just go back a bit. Yeah, let me just uh, let me just yeah. take it out of the stream because um, this is a, a new thing for the people that are watching and listening to this. This is something else that we uh, we want to try and make this a bit more engaging for you yeah. guys and watching and listening. So what we've done is we've got a couple <clears throat> of clips out of the movie, and what we'll do is you know we'll just interject them from time to time so that you can watch. And I've literally just clipped this because Justin sent me a timestamp of the movie. Um, so if I play it, we'll, we'll watch. Well, before you play it, basically okay. you got to you got to look for the celebrity cameo. Yeah. Yes, I know exactly what. You're... Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're yeah. going to say because yeah, early, like about a couple of minutes ago, you probably saw me laughing. Um, that's because yeah. I was just clipping this as we were talking. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's watch it. <clears throat> Uh, spider controllers, you'll be joining an organization which, thank the good Lord, was not rushed up hastily yesterday. It'll be a pain in the neck to the enemy when he comes. <laughs> get up our sleeves. Now, the RDF chain shows us where they are. Information is passed to group. Group scrambles the necessary squadrons. And you, at sector level, guide our chaps it's a bit of a close to the interception. Coming. It's been tried and tested. I think I know exactly <clears throat> where you're going with this. So don't blame right. the system if you're no good. <laughs> <laughs> Now, clearly, 11 group here will bear the... You see it, Smith. I don't know who you're talking here. about. Uh, we'll find out to your yeah, you know who we're talking about, but... Uh, it is a bit, well, yeah. group is our second line of defence. <laughs> the industrial well, I'm not going to laugh because it, actually he was the second world war hero. And 10 group here we go. So it's just panning in. There we go. Yep. No, that's that yeah, angle of him is not, not so not, No, it's not that. No, <laughs> yeah. that bit <laughs> isn't. But the that first that section a... there is like... What's Joe Biden doing in exactly? <laughs> yeah, I knew, yeah. What is, why the fuck is Joe Biden in this movie? Yeah, because you see, we've got the same fucking expression, sort of glazed dementia look. Oh, yeah, um, basically. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, <clears throat> the reason why they put it put him in there was he volunteered to be what, in there. He was what, one Joe of, Biden. Or Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Yeah, because he was actually a Second World War uh, Spitfire <laughs> uh, hero, and he uh, fought for the. Um, Royal Air Force, and basically the reason was, was to show people the effects of uh, flying during uh, the Second World War, Be because people didn't really appreciate it, and he was one of the uh, aces who got uh, shot down and got burnt, and that's why they were showing him from different angles, showing how the plastic surgery and stuff was done at the time, and obviously it wasn't like modern times where they could make it that perfect, so that's why it looks like Joe Biden, who's a tra actually time traveller. As you can see from this movie, it's actually saying that Joe Biden looks like a Burns victim. Uh, it, it seems like it, if, <laughs> according to <laughs> anyway. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't spot that first time around. I mean, I, you know, I'm not laughing at the guy that's disfigured in any way, certainly not, but um, you're yeah, just laughing at Joe that, Biden that, that, that wide <laughs> angle. It really does look like Joe Biden sat there in the room. Yeah, amazing, mm. really. It is funny. I Can you imagine if that, that was Joe? Well, Whoa! Can you imagine if there was Joe Biden? How many times you would have to explain to him what we were actually trying to achieve there? Well, I don't know. He's on yeah. the wrong wrong side though for this film, isn't he? He'd probably have a cue card anyway, wouldn't he? Yeah. Regardless of yeah. what side he's on, he would have a cue card <laughs> telling him to sit down, stand up, go for a piss, say yeah. yes, say no. Oh, pol political, political. Oh, wow. Well. Oh. I tell you the uh, what I find interesting about this film. Obviously, we're we're British, we're English, so of course we're mm. like you know all about we understand the war, we won the war, and all the rest of it. And of course, we understand the great loss of that cause. But what yeah. I found interesting about this film as well is that although the the version I watched didn't have the subtitles, I have watched this film many many times. Uh, and of course, you know the British press will claim one thing, and then you get a clip to Germany, and of course it tells you know something completely different, which is otherwise known as propaganda. Uh, we know this, um, but it's, all the time. Yeah, but, it, but that's what I'm saying. It's still rife even now. I mean, we moan about social media, but you know, propaganda is not, hasn't changed in any way. Right. You know, one one person says something, another says another, and you don't know who to necessarily believe, do you? You know, but well, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. Well, absolutely, yeah. But I think what what one thing is true about this, uh, you know, and obviously knowing a bit about World War II, I know Paul, you and I share that sort of interest, is that. You know, he did, you know, stop bombing the airfields. And if he hadn't stopped bombing the airfields, the chances are he would have, he would have turned, you know, turned oh. the war. Yeah. Um, I mean, we want to are you talking about he, he? 
Hitler. Who's he? Because uh, you're so, yeah, so you know, such a megalomaniac that yeah. it was like, no, I'm going to take out London. I'm, you know, I've done the job now. And... Well, that was, that was two mistakes well, he made, really, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, that was retaliation, wasn't it, as it's depicted in this film. It's pure that's retaliation. Right. Because they dropped a load of bombs on Berlin. And it's like, right, that's it. Fuck that. I'm not having that. Let's obliterate London. Well, yeah, and actually, to tell you the, um, of course, that scene that of um, which you see quite a lot, obviously in his, the historical um, television, it still takes me back to um, Star Wars. You know, where the, the, he's at the front there and all the crowds and everyone. I just, I can't even now watch an Andor with the flared trousers. I mean, it's just so Germanic, well, you know. That was the whole point. Star yeah. Wars was a retelling of, yeah, of the Second, Second War, War, essentially. Yeah. 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 Well. I have to say one thing. Both sides, the Air Forces, the uniforms were just amazing. They looked great. Um, yeah, what can well, I say? But the both, German both uniforms were spectacular. I mean, they were elaborate. They were detailed. Um, and you knew who was, was who. I think that's always been a slight confusing thing over here is that the uniform sometimes doesn't make it clear who you are no. and what you do. But German uniforms, I don't know what it is. Just you see someone... In you just you know, roughly, whether they're just a simple soldier or you know Gestapo or SS or you but just know, Air, don't you? But the Air Force had a different color. They had a light, lightish blue, grayish color, while, while the uh, the German Army had a green, grayish color uniform uh, as well. I think that was a difference. And the leather mm. jacket, uh, I have I to say, I, that was. I think it's fair to say that best dressed army. Ever so, you know, so far in world history. Yeah. Well, Germany, I mean, I yeah. think, the, yeah, yeah, I think, the, I think the Romans back in the day were pretty well dressed. I mean, oh, definitely. Yeah, from, yeah, yeah, but yeah. they, they didn't have Hugo Boss. Bet they didn't have Hugo Boss then, no. did they? No, no, but, Hugo wasn't around. He wasn't available. Yeah, but, but from a purely tactical, <laughs> from a purely yeah. tactical sense, Roman army was just yeah. fantastically dressed. But yeah, the German army in the you know in the forties, definitely up there. Yeah. Top five best dressed armies. Next, next YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, because because of that, Hugo Boss uh, was actually kicked out of his own company. He was never ever allowed to run Hugo Boss again after the war because he dressed a Nazi party and uh, the. Forces. I think it might be different if they had won, maybe, but. Yeah. But I think if they had won, then they would be probably ruling us. We would be speaking German now, not um, English in Britain, probably. Oh, I don't. I mean, the thing is actually the interesting thing at the beginning of this film is like they sort of give the impression they're not even that bothered about Britain, really. Well, they're, yeah, they're, well, they're, apparently never were. Hitler didn't no. want to come to war. You know, do, do you remember um, Rudolf Hess? Was yeah. Rudolf Hess that was sent over in a plane that landed over in Scotland. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you yeah, there's a lot of rumours and a lot of um, uh, paperwork that backs up the fact that he was there to organize some kind of treaty some kind of collaboration between us yeah. and the germans they didn't want to fight us they saw us as natural um allies, allies. yeah don't mm. forget because it was the connection of the royal family and stuff like that so it was cousin exactly. it was his cousin yeah. that's what that, yeah. that's what he said uh as well the only thing he did and uh sort of admire about britain was uh, actually the empire and what he said you keep the empire and i have europe because that's that was the deal he wanted to come out with, but obviously we said nope. We're not, we're not going to let you have you. I do. I did love, love that bit in the film. I mean, that was almost sort of really, you know. Obviously, now that we know about history, and it was a really heartwarming part, wasn't it? You know, sort of saying, you know, and even then we still won't listen. You know, when you're oh, marching up, like, yeah. it's like that British defiance. It's like fuck off. You know, yeah, it's so, not going to happen. The, the two ministers talking together, yes, yeah. and one, yeah, the, the, yeah, it's in Switzerland as well, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, the German, one of the German ambassadors goes to an English minister and basically Kurt, says, The Fuhrer, be... the Fuhrer yeah. doesn't want doesn't want to go to war with you, so he's his natural allies and stuff. So, he tries to make a deal, yeah, and that guy says, You know, you, you could be marching up the marching up Whitehall and would still yeah. say no, yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. I think if that was the case, I don't think we would have a choice to say no, would we, or yes or no to them if they were marching up Whitehall, really. I mean, the fact is, the mistake he made was he went for the Soviet Union at the same time, and that really cost him the war. Uh, didn't have a choice, unfortunately. No, he didn't no. have a choice because the Russians were starting to uh, get a little bit suspicious. On the, 
Well, yeah, and they were starting to yeah, reneg I, on the deal. Yeah, I yeah. think I think a few boats coming across the channel from from Piddle Little Britain is nowhere near much of a worry as half of Europe being bordered by, you know, the biggest military force um, known to What's man at sheer, the time. Yeah, sheer numbers, isn't it, in Russia? <clears throat> as we yeah. know, they were just sending. And I always think of that, you know, the, the, was it the Stalingrad or one of the uh, the last last yeah. ro rolls of the dice for the Russian army, where they were sending men out, one with a rifle, one with ammunition. Yeah. So one yeah. dropped, they'd pick up the rifle and keep moving forward. And if they didn't, they turned back, then they'd be shot by That's their right. commanding officers. It was That's a right. Fucking hell. Well, wasn't yeah. it also a case where the commanding officers were actually shot themselves, were asked to commit suicide if they uh, didn't? Um... Hmm. Yeah, if they failed. That was it. Yeah. Given the gun. Yeah. Do the honourable thing. Yeah. So it was. Yeah, it was. We just had no choice if you're in the, the Russians. Yeah, the Russians are fucking brutal at that point as well. And of course, <clears> when <throat> I was thinking about the Polish in this in this movie, I'm glad that they were portrayed actually because um, yeah, you think well, about they those poor bastards. Part. Yeah, when you think about those poor bastards in Poland. They were invaded by the Germans and completely ravaged. Yeah. And then on the way out, they were completely ravaged by the bloody Russians as well. Yeah. Worse, completely than, than... decimated. Yeah. So... Well, didn't there was a deal, wasn't it? The, I forgot the deal between Hitler and Stalin. There was a name for it, which they said you can have part of Poland or something to the Soviets, and they did some dirty work for the Germans without them realizing they were doing it for the Germans. Uh, and in the end, well, well, when the war came down and stuff like that, loads of history has come out uh, with mass graves of officers, Polish officers and army people. I forgot the name of the forest, but... Uh, Black Forest, to... I think you're talking about. Well, Black... Isn't that why it's called the Black Forest? No, that is in... Um... No, 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 no. No, 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 really? that's not the Black Forest. Yeah, Black this Forest has always been called the Black Forest. We have to get Black Forest Ghetto and that stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what, yeah. yeah. I don't think they would call Black Forest Ghetto if it was a place where people got murdered or... Uh, well, it could have been know, a tribute. But this I was in a Poland. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, maybe. I have a clip about that Polish stuff, actually, which I'm yeah. going to play. Finally, and God alone knows why, I've received the following signal. Congratulations, as of today, this squadron is operational. Signed, Keith Park, Air Vice Marshal AOC 11 Group. Yeah, they understood that, though. Did you hear the, the guy translate that? Yeah. Yeah. They understood that bit perfectly well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they understood a lot of it. That's, that was the yeah. whole part. You know, when they're in the planes and, that, and they're all going, repeat, sir, repeat. Yeah, repeat. yeah. They know. And they were flying off. Yeah, they knew exactly. And they just wanted to fucking have a go at Jerry, didn't they? Yeah. And I, I, I sure. quite like that section. <laughs> The yeah, whole section yeah. in the film, actually, of the Polish pilots there, because yeah, they're all playing a bit dumb. It, yeah. it was quite funny when one of them, yeah, one of them um, bailed out of their plane after being shot down, and they oh, ended yes. up in that field, and those farmers just walked straight up to him and uh, yeah, good afternoon, <laughs> my ass. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon, my ah. ass, you bosh bastard. Come on, put brilliant. your hands up. I love that. <laughs> yeah, he, so he thought, uh, obviously, he made a mistake. He should have unzipped his finger and shown his uniform. Obviously, therefore, it was German. So that was funny. Good but... afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so polite. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, get afternoon, uh, my ass. It's like I remember having a teacher called Popovich. And obviously, I don't know, I uh, understand it at the time. When I, this was when I was a little kid. But yeah, then I realized um, she had a Polish sort of heritage. And obviously, her parents probably fought or grandfather fought in the Second World War, whatever the case is. Um, it was amazing how many different people from different parts of the world actually uh, fought for us. Well, I was just um, looking at the numbers, actually, end of the film. It was 141 Polish pilots. It was the second... Highest number of allied pilots. I have mm -hmm. that as a clip as well. Should I play it? Yeah, yeah. Before we play it, there is one part. Of, uh, I did a little bit more research, and I'm not being woke, as I said to you, Paul before. Actually, there were uh, four Sikhs, four Sikhs who were actually uh, fought in the Battle of Britain, which have not been included. So there were some Commonwealth. Um... It's racist to me. <laughs> Let's play the yeah. clip. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the 21 Australians, 73 New Zealanders, 88 Canadians, 21 South Africans, 2 Southern Rhodesians, 8 Irish, 7 American, 141 Polish, 86 Czech, 26 Belgian, 13 Free French, 
one Israeli, and apparently four Sikhs. Apparently four Sikhs. Yeah. yeah. And there's another thing. Uh, Israel wasn't created until 1948, so that was meant to be Palestine. But because they might get insulted, they called it Israel. God damn. I'm insulted, you racist. Right. So, right moving on. <sighs> does anyone want to take a stab at what that car was that that officer was driving? What, the green one? Yeah. I. Pff, I'm oh, they go, look like a Morris. They Austin. look like a. Minor, Morris Minor sort of thing. Well, I have a clip of that too, just to jog your memory. Perhaps an Austin, you can... maybe a Morgan or some an Austin something. Let's, Let's play. Let's play. Let's go. I just like the car. suspension on it. Look, look at the suspension. It looks like driving a waterbed. So, what is that? It looks like an Austin uh, something. Yeah, it does. It looks like Austin or uh, Morgan or something like that. Well, you've got to think of the era as well. It's definitely not yeah. a Ford. I'm pretty sure that's not a Ford. No, I don't think Ford can make beautiful cars like that at the time. Well, I like it anyway. I thought it was quite, quite a nice little um, motor, that. Yeah. Uh, what about the German car? Well, they're all Mercedes. The that, that... But did you notice it didn't have a Mercedes badge on top? Because all the Mercedes have uh, used to have badges, like all Hitler's cars and everything. If you look at historic uh, documentaries. Oh, it's an MG. It's an MGPA midget. Oh, nice. The Chinese hmm. own MG now. Just Oh, know. and it's still in existence. Oh, is it? Yeah. What, yeah. the one? 1934 MGPA midget four-seat Tora. That's Justin's next car. Yeah, but I agree with you. It's a cool looking car. There it is. Yes. It's a shame all the cars look the same nowadays. I mean, all the manufacturers virtually have the same sort of bodywork, and yeah, shame about that. Mm. But the German car is pretty spectacular. I mean, the the um, limos that Hitler used to go around, the, the, the big seven litre Mercedes Benz. I, I remember yeah. watching a program where a guy, I think it was combat dealers, and um, I watched. Well, him, I... He, yeah, Me and the boys Bruce, are getting out. Yeah, Brucey. Brucey and combat dealers. And um, he goes abroad and he goes in the barn and he sees one of these things. And the guy says, oh, I can't you know, claim too much to it. But apparently this is one of the, the, the big 70 Mercedes that Hitler used. And it was fucking yeah. huge. Huge. Yeah. Uh, and they were the first armour plated uh There were seven cars. of them he had, apparently. So that seven or eight of them made. And you're right, they were armour plated and supercharged as well. So they were... Pretty fierce. Yes, they were, yeah. And Hermit uh, Goring had a blue one, uh, uh, his personal one, which mm. was blue. Yeah. Yeah. Did that, that match his matching bra and suspenders, did it? Well, it was a bit of a, gay, it was a, bit, bit of a baby blue you know, uniform he wore, didn't it? And, and I'll tell, tell, tell you something as well, actually. I was down in Deal um, a couple of weeks ago, or about a month ago or so, and you have to go through Dover to get to Deal because you have to do like, this funny loop up through the cliff. And uh, and on the way back, um, unbelievably, uh, you saw you, it was clear you could see right across the front because obviously it's the shortest gap, as we all know, from Dover to Calais. Mm -hmm. And it was like looking from Gosport over to um, Yarla White. It's like that. It felt like it was that close. And I thought at that moment, I thought, God, blimey! You know, just think once upon a time Hitler was like there with his bin binoculars, you know, looking over at us. And it, I thought that very moment, I thought you could almost, today you could almost see somebody doing that. Well, it's Napoleon so, did it 100 so years before. Well, indeed. But it just yeah. it just reminds you actually how close we are at that point anyway. Uh, we actually are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, and I mean, you can, it, you can easily traverse that ocean with a, a rubber dinghy. Well, so, you think, but of course the currents are very strong there because it, it, it pushes it. <laughs> That's one of the problems. It, the the, uh, the currents get quite strong around that area. Um, well, apparently course, not. It's, apparently it's quite easy to do it in a rubber dinghy. Well, true. I think the, the bit was... Well, it's amazing. Engine. Hitler had all this technology and he couldn't do it, but he can do it with a rubber yeah, dinghy. Yeah, Hitler, I mean, what a dick. He could have invaded England, just sent all these all these troops yes. over on rubber dinghies, yeah. and he would have completely obliterated us. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but of course the shoreline's quite difficult. That's the thing. You have to pick uh, your point well, 
over here. Well, I'm not really getting, uh, well you think it's really difficult. difficult. <laughs> it's really not difficult. It's been proven quite a lot recently. It's been proven yeah. quite a lot. It's really easy. But I mean, from mass though, because they're doing it like covert and you know, sort of secretly, you know. But if you want to bring an oh. army over, you can't. That's why we kind of chose. In broad daylight. No, you can yeah. do it in broad daylight. You can just you hit got... the beach and just scatter, and and they, you can just completely dis, dis, disappear into the country. Yeah. He, but don't forget, he he broad probably, daylight. It doesn't matter. He probably would have had hundreds of U-boats come towards it and then... Don't need them. Don't no. need them. Rowing boats, rubber dinghies, complete invasion. Do you, want to try, do you want to try it one day then? Yeah, I'll, might, yeah just do it the other way. We, we'll go yeah. to Calais. Okay. But make <laughs> sure next, we have our... Next YouTube video, 11, yeah, it goes to Calais <laughs> in a rubber dinghy. <laughs> we'll see how easy it is to get into France. <laughs> Do you, reckon, do you reckon they let us in though? Do you reckon, do you reckon we turn up and go, oh, good afternoon, chaps? Just, no, just thought we'd try it, you know, see how we down with, No, they're most down with machine gun fire. That's what the yeah. French would do. Well, actually, Jeremy Clarkson did it in Top Gear, didn't they, with their motorised cars? Went across the channel <laughs> from Dover, didn't they? Landed at Calais. Vaguely remember that. Mm. Mm. Didn't he always sink Sorry. halfway uh, when he got there? Just yeah. about, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember that one. But, but these people, people swim it as well, though, don't they? There were these these like sea swimmers. They do actually swim backwards and forwards between. Yeah, that but part. I don't think you can send an army by swimming. But rubber dinghies, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, moving on to, from the rubber so, dinghies. Um, yeah, it's back to Britain, not back to the Atlantic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I quite like the the fact that you got a German perspective in this. You, you yeah. saw yeah. both sides fairly well represented. Um. And it was quite nice that they retained the German language in this. They didn't dub it over or they didn't force a load of English actors to put on fake German accents like it was an episode of Hello, Hello, which was pretty good. <laughs> Just pissing by. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard a shit. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it's ridiculous. But no, I, I quite like that. Um, there's, there's a number of war films that I quite like. One is called Stalingrad, which is an early 90s movie. Which is about the Germans and just the absolute, you know, the way it was so brutal in Stalingrad and stuff. And that's all German with, um, you know, English subtitles and stuff. And it adds, just adds to the authenticity of it all. So I quite like that. For a, a movie done in 1969, it would have been very easy, I think, to get a bunch of English actors or whatever actors to um, just affect a German accent and get on with it. Mm. Yeah. And not only Agreed. that, it's also I'm 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 really happy that did get actual German actors because don't forget the wound was still open, and there oh, were people, yeah, so, yeah, 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 and people weren't too happy maybe to have Germans come into Britain or whatever. You could have the the thing is I said you could have used Swiss actors or Austrian actors of German descent, but I think they were a little bit angry with the Austrians as well, weren't they? Um, uh, some of the veterans. Oh, the the Austrians are more, were more more dedicated to the cause than the Germans were. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, I think it was their uncle, wasn't it, who was leading the Germans astray? Was it? The Austrian is it's a fascinating country, Austria. And yes, yes. Anyway, oh. never been. Yeah, I've been there um, twice, and uh, very interesting. I mm. recommend it. It's lovely. I mean, like the, their houses are fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I went to um, Schladming a couple of years ago. Bless you. Um, and I, I, was, uh, I was patient zero for COVID. I'm pretty sure of it and all in January 2019. But anyway, um, beautiful. Their, their houses are just phenomenal. Absolutely fucking massive. And they've got so much space around them and so much land. You know, like, like here and most other countries, I think it's just densely packed into grid-like rectangular formations. Why do over people, there, so why do people come here then? Why don't they go if there's so much space that elsewhere? Why don't people uh, migrate? I wouldn't. There? I wouldn't. If I was here, I wouldn't want to uh, answer that question. What about is it Austria? about us that is so appealing? No uh, comment at the to, moment. Is it because we say hello rather than to f that, off? No, I think to summarise, I think we have the we, we have the the biggest welfare system in the entire in the entirety of Europe. I think that's why. And not only that, Austria is quite right wing even to this day. Yeah, uh, they they like they appreciate their culture and want to keep hold of it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're not going to chop people's hands off if they do go over there. At least no, that would that would. 
no, there wouldn't. I think what I don't want to get into politics here, but I think it's about, as I say to people, it's about integration more than immigration, although it's a very high number. Uh, and obviously, when I was a kid, um, I was taught all the Britishness, uh, British culture, and stuff like that. I used to do pole dancing, not pole dancing in the sense of stripping, right? I'm talking about country dancing, okay? Um, when I was a kid at school, loved it. Did, did you go to the wrong my, lessons? My, what, what fucking school was that? I never yeah. went. <laughs> did Morris anyway, start? Morris start we steer this up? back to the movie okay, from Lovin and Samir's strange, obscure child. Yeah. Mm. Right. Samir's indoctrination to maypole dancing, or whatever the fuck he was mm. talking about. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah. Enjoyed it. Um, right. Another point that I've got. Um, I, I've mentioned about the characters. I just didn't feel any connection to them whatsoever. And I thought the storylines are all kind of confused and messed up. One question I do have that either of you might be able to answer, Ian McShane's character, mm-hmm. he gets a little bit of leave, doesn't he? And then goes back to London. I think yeah, he goes back to London yeah. to try and meet yeah. his wife and kids. Yeah, I would love to. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So he meets them in the town hall because the mm. bombing and all that is between yeah, yeah, yeah. houses and whatnot, right? So he... The, there's a, a group, I can't remember what they're called now, the group, the wardens, um, are I'm going, going to the town hall and they ask for help, volunteers. for volunteers to go help and sort of clear the rubble and try and rescue people from the rubble. Yeah. He goes and then he comes back and the town hall is completely obliterated. Yeah. He loses his family. It's bombed. Yeah. So his family died in that. Yes. That, that's what we assume, yeah. Since the whole yes. thing is literally a rubble. That, with, that's right. why he uh, goes to the officer's house in the country. You know, if you remember the next day. Well, that's what I was going to ask about because he yeah. wasn't really upset, was he? No, he didn't yeah. act like a man that was in mourning and completely devastated that his wife and two children had been killed. As a generation thing, stiff up a lip, get on, we're in war, sort of thing. I, Bollocks. Well, I, I think it's probably works. a little bit of post post traumatic sort of coming to terms with it, possibly. Um, I just, but I guess completely. I, I don't know. I guess because he wasn't there and didn't witness and didn't see them, maybe it wasn't quite so bad. I mean, if you saw a you know no, spit I, I don't hanging think... over the uh, hanging over the town hall wall, <laughs> it might have been a bit more traumatic. You know, All right? But... Can you imagine no. if you went to work one day, Justin, and then you right you come home right? from work and your house had been completely blown up by a gas explosion and your entire family had died, would you just go, oh, well, let, oh all right. I'll tell, tell you what, just off topic but <laughs> Let's related. Let's go back to work. Right, right. <laughs> off, off topic but related. So I I always thought, what would I what would I do, right? If, if like tomorrow there was a, a, a zombie apocalypse broke out, yeah, and, you know, the, the place was devastated and it suddenly became in a day every man for himself. I think I would rather carry on my life not knowing or seeing what happened to my family than immediately trying to go and find my family to find them zombified or have to shoot them in the head, you know, or whatever the case may be. I don't know. I think psychologically you, you feel better never knowing what happened or seeing the outcome. But they could, be, go back, but they could be sat there going, when's daddy coming back to save us? When's well, they daddy could be. coming back? They could be. So let's hope we never have to make this decision. Sorry, kids. Um, <laughs> so, you know, go back. You're on your own. But then I haven't I haven't thought that I, my, my mind hadn't been stimulated <laughs> to that thought until just now for many years. So the kids were younger then, but uh, you know I didn't expect well, my uh, fuck but, them. They're fine. They can handle themselves. So don't I don't worry. know. I think be right. you'd be devastated, <laughs> of course you would, because it's your family. But yeah. I, I don't think there's any buts to that. Just, I think that people deal off. with grief in yeah different ways. Just walk uh, off. I, 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 you're fine. I think I'm going to go back to the realistic place where there's not going to be a zombie, whatever you say. But if I was in this position, I think it was a generation thing. Yes, you get upset and people didn't show their feelings. And that's why we had a problem for quite a long time in this country when people weren't, didn't show their feelings. There was a stiff upper lip. We were doing it was during the war. But if that happened to my personally, to my family, yes, I'll probably break down in front of the house and probably be on my knees. I crying. think I agree. I'm not. I do agree with you, but I think if he was on enemy territory, I think he would have got a baseball bat, put some barbed wire around, called it Lucille and and turned it to Negan, I think. Yeah, for sure. Because and and, and get your revenge. But what could you do? There's crying and blubbing. Just blubbing in front of the house. And I think that's where, to me, you come in. That's that's where the stiff upper lip kicks in. You think, you know, it's right. Back to duty. Nothing I can do. Get up your pain and shoot down some cherries. 
Tally ho, pit pit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, but I would actually, yeah. And then I would get up and go, yep, that's it. Now I need to get my uh, revenge. Uh, but in those days, it was a different generation, different attitude. Um, Still probably gave so, the desired motivation, though. Of course it does. If some, if the enemy kills your family, that means oh, I'm going to go up back in the air, get half a dozen of those. Doesn't matter if I die, but I'm going to get oh, some. And I think that's it. probably Paul's point with the Polish as well, not understanding the language. Yeah, that's that, exactly yeah. what they wanted to do, wasn't it? They don't... Poor old Fritz up there in his, in his Messerschmitt 109. He didn't do it, did he? He was in person. He did it, old Fritz. He's just up yeah. there doing a job like everyone else. Yeah, Taking but then it out get... on him, that's not fair, is it? But then again, it's like any <laughs> army or air force, isn't it? Like uh, they're just taking orders. Uh, I mean, if you look at like the 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 movie and how many German air force people were getting killed and Royal Air Force people, you think about it. Hold on, these guys shouldn't really be killing each other. They should be saying, "Hold on, guys, it's nothing to do with us. Let's 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 lend, let us lend the plane. Let's have an afternoon tea together, have some cake, and then we'll fly back." And let's well, that, that, well that, that that did happen in in. In, in certain senses, there's lots of documentaries and, and films were trained that, that, you know, where German mechanics working on these planes would, would um, uh, what's the word for it? Um, not load them with enough bullets or, but what's the word I'm looking for? Sabotage. Sabotage. Would, would sabotage the aircraft, you know, so that they either failed or broke down and et cetera. So there's, there's lots of, you know, the, or the French sure. resistant infiltrated and, I'm surprised that you mentioned that because my immediate reaction to that one was what happened um, in the early days of World War One, mm. when it was yeah. Christmas, when we've got that fabled story of the English and the Germans meeting in no man's land and having a game of football. That's a yeah. Good Friday agreement, wasn't it? Um, I don't know. I'm not, good no, Friday was, agreement was, was on Christmas. Uh... Is that not a Good Friday agreement? I'm sure it was. That's Northern Ireland, isn't it? Good Friday agreement? Oh, I don't know. I mean that. Yeah, well, I, I believe it was over a Christmas period. It was. Uh, I Christmas. think you're probably right. Yeah. It but the thing is, the point was, is that during the early 1900s, warfare was very different because you yeah. didn't have weapons of mass destruction. I mean, that's no. you know, what we consider WMDs now is totally different to what, the, what it was then. But, you know, they had rifles, single shot rifles, and they would just go and stand in a line and take turns at shooting at each other. And it was all a very honorable, gentlemanly thing to do. And then the, second world, the First World War happened, and it was trench warfare with machine gun fire, where they're just mowing down hundreds of people That's marching right. across muddy fields. And they're like, fuck yeah, it was me, just a Christmas truce. This is different. This yeah. is different. So, but the attitudes were different there. A lot of people at that period of time in history were hesitant to kill one another. You know, if they come face to face to each other in trench warfare, they would be immediately trying to bayonet each other. They'd be stood there like having a bit of a standoff, like, oh shit, you know, what am I supposed to do? Because the humanity was still there. But by the Second World War, it was gloves are off. That's it. Well, mm. uh, basically, there's a, a very interesting thing about the First World War. Now, it always actually brings a little bit of uh, pride to, uh, to me as well in humankind. It's when the Red Bone got killed. Um, we gave him full honours, uh, basically, when we did his funeral uh, before giving his body to the Germans. And that is some respect when you give your enemy... Uh, the full military honours and the highest honours you can give. People had value for, uh, for money and respect for your rank and stuff like that. Nowadays, we don't even know who we are fighting in certain cases. So that's not going to be, it's not going to be the same. And as you say, warfare has changed. Massively. I mean, speaking right. of fighting, um, the end dog, seat, uh, dog fighting scene in this, no. they removed all the sound effects. It was just music playing. It was like yeah. a montage. I was a bit disappointed by that, actually. I, I thought mm. that kind, of, kind of ruined it for me. No, yeah. I, I, I wish uh, they had... I think it was almost more. as if they were just trying to wrap the film up. It was almost like, crikey, it's been going for two hours, better get on with it yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, we know the ending, so there's no point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, it, was a it was a cost, actually, because it, it, they had 30 uh, um, bombers from the Spanish... Uh, Air Force, who were, they were going to get rid of them. There were there were actual German aircrafts with Spanish engines. Same with the German um, fighters, uh, and the same thing happened with uh, the Spitfires and the Hurricanes. They got them, so they had a lot of air. There were over 150 to 200 aircraft altogether, or something, from different uh, armies and navies and private collectors. They had Americans, four or five uh, Americans, come along who actually flew as well. Uh, the planes during the uh, 
air scenes. So it, it was like it cost them about twelve million pounds, which is a lot of money in those days, uh, and it only made thirteen million. Uh, so it just made a profit, they're saying, and it made more money afterwards via rents and coming on TV, etc. And that's why they, I think, they wrapped it up because it was a cost, simple cost. Mm. Leaving. It's probably worth mentioning. Yeah, but now we're talking about details of the actual production, the movie production. Is that uh, Guy Hamilton directed this? He mm. directed a number of Bond movies, and it was Saltzman. financed by Harry Saltzman as well. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's right. So, the Bond connection raises its head yet again. Obviously, yeah. that thread flows through Samir. All the stuff he recommends has always got some sort of connection to Bond somehow or another. Well, interesting. The Kurtz Jurgens. <laughs> what, what, what what year was? Um, was it seventy seven? Seventy seven. So this was before his Bond appearance. Yes. So I wonder if he, um, that sort of influenced their, their sort of casting suggestions Maybe. at that point. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Uh, not, not only that, but uh, at the time, he was probably the biggest German star in Hollywood. Um, and his history is really, uh, really fascinating because I read about him. He actually was put into labor camp because he was against the Nazis and he escaped and he went to Austria. And after that, he became an Austrian citizen mm. and never went back to Germany. Riveting. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. What, 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 uh, what, what I'm trying to say is, uh, yeah. there were certain Germans who morally didn't agree. It, you know, like when you're a kid, you've been told um, uh, that. Great movie with amazing Colin. It's a mash watch film. Watch film. Uh, must watch like, film. <laughs> yeah. I like doing this to Samir when he's in mid flow. Yeah, yeah, just, just <laughs> throw him off a little bit. It's, it's like it's like. It's like throwing a, a ball of wool at Kit. Yeah. They just cannot ignore it. They've just got to go for it. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I mean, like, you know, when we were kids, we were taught that every German was a Nazi. Uh, every person of the population, uh, everyone was the enemy. Well, it, it's great to read some of these things in the background and realise it wasn't all, all, all of the nation. He was bad. He was like, no, some we people. know this. We, yeah, we mentioned. No, no, yeah, we mentioned. no, no. I'm yeah, not. Yeah. I'm not mentioning. Yeah. I'm just mentioning it from the research a, I'm doing. Yeah, it's a, and it's what a very we were small taught percentage that were actually dedicated yeah. Nazi Party members. The rest of them were just doing a job. It's like just a German military, the German army, the German Luftwaffe. Yeah, um, yeah they weren't dedicated loyalist Nazis. But everyone no, seems to think they were. Uh, it's like the Desert Fox. He only took orders from. Um, Hitler and Kai, because uh, he basically believed uh, he was a patriot, patriotic person, and he was uh, loyal to the German army. In it was his job, and he loved the German army too much not to take orders. But he never believed in um, the Nazi fantasy of ruling the world, etc. Uh, and there's quite a few officers were the same. Um, Gorin was bitter uh, with. Something happening, and his mother, I think, had an affair with a Jewish lord, whatever, Baron, when he was a younger kid, and that was his godfather. Uh, because his parents got divorced, he actually started blaming Jewish people, but he really had nothing against them before that. Uh, it was just because of the divorce, and then Hitler came along and just made him feel more inclined to what Hitler believed, and that's what happened. Uh, so there were people who were actually were played on to believe in certain things more than they did before. I can just hear keyboards just going you... historians going, what the fuck is this guy on about? But anyway. Yeah. No, I, I, it's just because I've seen documentaries uh, mentioning this. That's why I'm saying... Uh, um, or, or he just got a position of power and thought, oh, at least I'm going to be safe. Well, he was... He was pretty pally with Hitler, wasn't he? He was there mm. on the old um, beer hall putched when they marched yes. up the street and got shot out. I think he took a bullet in the leg as well, so he was dedicated yes. to the core. Anyway, shall we... Um, have we got anything else to say? Maybe we're going for 54 minutes, 55 minutes. No, I'm all good. I'm all good. All I'm going to say, oh, this is ahead. a better movie than Top Gun. This I don't the... think I don't think that's comparing apples of apples. I think they're no, two, I think the only relevance between yeah. the two is their aeroplanes. That's it. I, yeah. I don't yeah. think you can compare even. Rem- I think that's. I think it would almost be deemed as wrong to even try and compare. 
<laughs> these two films together. <laughs> Well, I think yeah. this was the foundation that built uh, uh, where Top Gear basically. I don't Top think that's Top true either. Top Gun basically. I don't uh, think basically. that's true either. No, I, I think just I think just Vietnam would be more poignant to the creation of Top Gun than Second World War. Back to Britain. It's just a, it's just a coincidence. You yeah, know, it's just planes. It makes for a good action movie, doesn't it? You yeah, know, just planes yeah. and flying about, shooting at things. No. Yeah. All right, should we score it then? Yeah, go on, in, Smith. Your pick, your choice, your score. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna give mate. it a. I'm gonna give it a seven. Is that uh, it? You what? Hold on, fucking what? <laughs> You've yeah, what, what? in this movie, all bleeding weak, and you give it a seven. Uh, I'm wait, uh, uh, like a fucking... No, I'm not gonna give it a nine or ten or anything like that. I'm gonna get. Uh, I was gonna give it an eight, but I, I think I'm gonna play the seven. There's a reason why. It's just I think it's good enough to watch. Uh, I really enjoy it. Uh, I think it depends on your age group as well if you enjoy it or not. Um, the special effects <laughs> I think this time I found a little bit disappointing because obviously it's uh, become 4K or whatever, HD, etc but I really enjoyed that actually using real aircrafts and extra German actors and Polish, etc, etc so that's why I'm giving it a 7 and I would recommend someone to watch it but not in a HD, watch it in its original form, where you find some of the special effects, n- not oh, obvious. Oh, I see what you're getting at. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, okay. All right. I wonder where you're going with that, but now I get it. Yeah. And that's why I've okay. given it a seven because of that. Okay. Right. Flip a coin, or do you want to go first, Justin? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give it an eight for sure. Okay. Um, it's depicting a very important true story. Um, I think it was it was filmed extremely well. I think the cast was very good. I like the authenticity of it, everything Smear said. Um, and it's a standalone film. I don't think it's a film... If you don't like world wars uh, and you don't have any interest in the history of it, then you wouldn't watch the film. If you are wanting to be slightly educated, um, then you'd watch it and you'd, you'd probably enjoy it. But I think it's one of those films where... Do you want to enjoy it? Because the truth of it is that it really happened and people did die. And whether you, yeah, it's not like watching Predator I, and you're thinking I jump the special in, effects are, are brilliant and that's why Justin, you give it an eight. Justin, should I save I, you from yourself and jump in at this point and give me yeah, a score? <laughs> I have to say one thing, Justin. I think no one likes wars. I mean, it's just a movie. If you like, oh, history, I can't get enough of the, 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 the historical element it. of it. <laughs> you can tell Paul. I'm yeah, like this, been... I'm like this with Russia and Ukraine, and that twat yeah. Zelensky going, "Oh, look, they're firing <laughs> missiles at us! Quick, everyone, nuclear war!" Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> anyway, right. So I'm giving it a six because, um, yes, yeah, not. Not awful. There was elements about this film I quite liked. I like the the fact they tried to stick with authentic German actors, Polish actors, etc. I like that. Um, the fact it as you know, it's part of um, our history, I suppose. You know, although I didn't ask to be born in England, I am English. Um, this historical moment. I think where it falls down though is that none of the fucking characters actually mean shit. They just don't. They just nothing. Well, there's no storytelling they're, they're, of the individual characters. Just, no, there's just nothing. So I didn't feel connected in any way to any of the characters. I, I, I kind of, yeah, it, um, it's, I wouldn't rush to watch this film again, but it's, it's, a, it's a, the only film I can really think of that is purely about a subject matter rather than actually a story. So I would think that if anyone's interested in the Battle of Britain, you'd be better off watching a documentary on the History Channel or something than watching this film. Yeah, I because agree. I don't really yeah. know what this film is trying to achieve because it's not really telling a story. And as you said earlier, Justin, we, we know the end. We know what happens. Yeah. Um, so it's just like a, a spectacle for spectacle's sake. It's like a docufilm. Well, that's what it should have been, I suppose. But docufilms, they usually focus around a, a, a group of real-life people that had hmm. pivotal moments in that part of history, whereas this film is just like a collection of people. I know some of them are based on real people. They're sort of thrown together, and, and you think of all the acting talent that's in this yes. movie, and I, I feel that there was no... There was no acting. You didn't feel invested in any particular no. actor or actress. No. So, yeah, so, yeah I, six out of ten for me. Um, I would not be in a rush to watch it again. Um, 
but it was all right. Another thing that I have to add to this about the movie, Gorin's hair, that blonde, the way they dyed his hair, uh, that was really bright. It was really, really bright uh, blonde. I'm not sure even if he was blonde in real life. I don't know. I don't know. I thought you would know, Justin. Well, I, I assume you might have been to part of the Aryan whole thing. I don't know. Well, being your grandfather and all, I thought, you know, you'd... <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Goring. No one knows yeah. that. Now we've revealed it live on air. It's Justin Goring. I bet we'll get quite a lot of hate mail now. <laughs> get him off there. Anyway, let's wrap it up there then. Let's yeah. leave it there. Okay. So that's the Battle of Britain, 1969. Done. That's it. That's the definitive word on it. No more movie reviews after this. This is the definitive one on the Battle of Britain. So, thanks for uh, thanks for watching and joining us, and uh, thanks to the new subscribers. That's pretty cool. We're uh, we're growing. Um, that's, I like that. That's quite good. Um, I don't have much more to say. Like it on social media. Give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. If you got this fucking far, the least thing you can do is hit the thumb up button. Don't even necessarily have to subscribe if you don't. Just hit the thumb up button for Christ's sake. I mean, that costs nothing, does it? Just go and do it. Anyway, it's goodbye for me. Taddy hair. I visit the zine. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs>